Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace make us heralds of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. 
In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The Word of the Lord. Psalm 138 I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name, because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, and which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genseret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever noticed how much the world has changed lately, or is it just me? I'm sure you have. I mean, I seem to be always thinking about how things used to be. You know, where people gathered together and kids played, and it seemed like the next time there were more people there than there were the time before. It doesn't matter if it were neighborhoods, school gatherings, community events, and yes, our church events. People were there together. One person would tell another person and so on and so on. And most were just ordinary people living ordinary lives, inviting others to be part of something special. But today we find ourselves more isolated than ever, and it's just not COVID. People don't know how to communicate with each other, don't know how to share experiences, and some, I'm afraid, have quit trying altogether. And we, the church, find ourselves in this same position. There are so many unchurched people in the world, and most will never enter a church in their lifetime. So how do we as Christians, as fishermen, go out and fish for lost souls? We feel like we've lowered our nets so many times only to come up empty. And like Simon Peter, we are tired and we just don't want to try anymore. Until Christ comes and says to us, go deeper, try harder, follow me, see what happens. What did Jesus say that day? What important teachings did he share? Luke doesn't tell us because that is not the point of his story. His point is, is what Jesus does next. Jesus tells Simon and the others in the boat to put it into deeper water and let down their nets. And having just come off that hard night of fruitless labor, Simon at first hesitates. He knows there are no fish to be had. Yet because it is Jesus who asks they deploy their nets. So fishing, as we know, was a popular trade on the Sea of Galilee. Fishing was the most common occupation for people residing in the small villages of Capernaum and Bethsaida, which was located on the lake shore. Living on the shores of Lake Galilee with its abundant supply of fish, people understood fishing perhaps more than they did farming. Living on the shores of the fishing lake, the whole town was into fishing. The disciples were called to become fishers of men or fishers for people. Jesus used this metaphor of fishing because that's what the people in these villages would understand. 
They would get it. These people intuitively understood fishing because it was their way of life. Fishing was their livelihood, their way of making a living, the primary way of putting food on their tables. So as Jesus comes, he's exhausted. He has been preaching along and around the Galilean lake. He has had huge crowds following him everywhere he went. He couldn't get away. Everyone, even Jesus, needs time to themselves to pray and to be quiet and to hear God's voice. So Jesus goes off to the shore and comes upon a couple of empty boats. And the fishermen were washing their nets that day. So Jesus gets into one of the boats and comes across Simon. And he asked them to take the boat out a little ways on the water so that he could move away from the crowds. Then he sat and taught the crowds from the boat. And when he finished, he asked Simon to go out yet a little further into the deep water and put down the nets. Well, Simon, like us, he was tired and they had had no luck that day. And he was just a little bit grumpy with Jesus. I hate to tell you, Jesus, but we've been out here all day and there's nothing to catch. We just cleaned those big, heavy nets and it's a lot of work to throw them back into the water. See, Simon was the professional fisherman. The disciples were not fishing with a fishing rod, reel, line, and hook, but with one of those big, heavy nets. Already, Simon was addressing Jesus as master. Yes, Simon will do as Jesus asks. If you say so, already Simon's heart was being caught by the love and spiritual authority of Jesus. So much so that Simon would act against his better fishing senses and go fishing again. And even though he had caught nothing all night, he may have been thinking to himself, Jesus is a good relig religious teacher, but he's not much of a fisherman. So Simon Peter lowers the nets, and they had so many fish, another boat had to come and help out. And Peter says, go away from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. I didn't have faith in you. You can imagine how, they, how some of them felt. They were elated as you would be. What a catch, Jesus says. Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. So go in peace and share the good news. Week after week, Christians gather together. We hear the word proclaimed, share the meal, and are sent out to bear the gospel of God in Christ Jesus to a hungry, needy world. Inside, though, we wonder why God has entrusted such an important mission to people like us. God's prophets and apostles carried the same anxiety. Isaiah declares, I'm a man of unclean lips. I can't possibly do it. Paul asserts, I am the least of the apostles, unfit to even be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. And Peter responds to Jesus' miracle of plenty by saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Yet without question, God used these flawed and fragile human beings to proclaim God's mercy and love. So what deep waters have you been called into lately? Where has faith led you? Sometimes we look at our work life and think, This hasn't prepared me for discipleship. Believe me, I've thought of that many times. I mean, after all, I haven't studied theology, we think, or learned Greek. And even though I have some, some of that experience, I still wonder, how can I, just a common laborer, a common fisherman, go out and make disciples? But yet, Jesus has faith in us. These past few years especially have been hard on the church as a whole. Many are hanging on by a thread, and many won't reappear. I read a commentary this past week about a church who was not anywhere close to meeting their budget they had for the current year, and they had started working on the next year's budget already. And the pastor wasn't at the meeting and that, at that day, and he had received a call from the committee the next day. 
Guess what? We raised the budget 10%. We opened in prayer and scripture and it was like the Holy Spirit descended on us and without hesitation, we passed the budget. Here was the pastor's response and I quote, he said in love, let me get this straight. The church that is 5% behind on this year's budget is going to have a 10% increase next year? That's crazy. I'm the spiritual leader of this congregation. I will tell you when the Holy Spirit gets here. There is no way that you will pledge that budget. More or less like Peter, get out of here, Jesus. There's no fish here. So the committee chair told him, well, you weren't there and moving forward. As the time went on and they met on Sundays during October, their chair reported on the progress during worship. The second Sunday in October, she rose at the beginning of the service and said, I never thought I'd live to see this day in this church. I am pleased to announce that we have pledged next year's budget in full. Well, the church erupted in spontaneous applause, which is all more amazing, consider that this is a huge increase over the years before budget. And the applause again. The committee chair noted, and I quote, now as I remember, there was somebody who said, you will never pledge that budget. Help me remember who said that. That's crazy, you will never pledge that bus budget. Who said that? We are all Peter in this life. Our faith often falters. Fear takes over and we waver and get stuck in those waters and we believe there are no more fish yet to catch. No more bodies left to hear the story of Christ's birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. And sometimes we just want to give up. Then the Holy Spirit intercedes and wow. Just this past week, as I was home and starting classes, I met with a professor online and we talked about the project for the semester. And she really emphasized the need for a biblical basis behind our research. If we don't start there, we lose our purpose. Even in these uncertain times of the church, we hold on to the stories of those who went ahead of us who heard God's voice speaking in them in the deep waters of nothingness, in the dryness of the deserts, in the middle of the wilderness, and sometimes filled with doubt, they responded, here I am, send me. God uses all of us frail, fragile humans to catch fish, to bring the lost and the lonely to Christ to find real and sustaining love. When you think you can't, that's exactly when you can do what God is calling you to do. We will know that we are on the right path as the disciples do if we can sense that new life of service beckon, beckoning us despite the risks is one that will bring never ending joy. So who are these people that God is giving us to fish for? The poor, the lonely, the child without a home, those who aren't here on Sunday, those who are grieving. Will, our answer, will we answer the invitation without fear and follow God's call for our lives? Do not be afraid, Jesus says. Come and follow me. And let our answer be, here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen. Now the, may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You have come down to the lake shore Neither the wise or the wealthy, but only asking for me to follow. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes. Of my name, on the 
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness who rejoices over you and who calls you by name. Bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. 
Amen. Christ into this weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.